Today's episode of Chicago Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. Stay nice and clean downstairs with the Lawnmower 4.0. It's going to trim it up just like uh, a lawnmower would trim up your lawn. Uh, you got to keep it nice and fresh down below. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. If you got Bush, make sure to eliminate it with Manscaped. All right, I'm Harrison Graham. Welcome into Bears Now. Our show today uh, is a way too early, not way, but a little bit of an early 53-man roster projection. We'll go position by position. Uh, and then, you know, in uh, September when the final roster comes out, we'll get to see how close I was on my initial one. We'll certainly do a couple more projections between now and week one. All right, uh, here we go. We'll start with quarterback and on offense. Uh, two quarterbacks make the 53. Justin Fields, obviously the starter. Trevor Simeon, the backup. Nathan Peterman gets cut, but I do think he does return onto the practice squad. So I think it's pretty straightforward here. I think this is what the uh, depth chart will look like, obviously projected for now. But uh, I think Fields and Simeon are your two guys. And Peterman, uh, you, you keep on your practice squad as one of your vets on the practice squad. I think he can carry two or four. I forget what the number is. Uh, I think he will be that guy. How many quarterbacks will the Bears keep on their active roster? Type two or type three? You think it's going to be two? You think it's going to be three? Let us know how many quarterbacks will they keep, two or three. Let's go to the running back position. David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, Treston Ebner, Kari Blossom game at fullback. And then Darrington Evans gets cut. He was right there on the roster bubble. But I just don't see the upside to carrying four running backs plus a fullback. That feels like overkill to me. I don't think it's necessary. I think Treston Ebner can do enough of the things that er Evans did and you are that Evans can do. And uh, you drafted uh, Ebner. So I think uh, there's some investment there. David Montgomery is your starter. Herbert's the RB2. And then Ebner can kind of be your do-it-all back and catch a little bit, can run some as well, do some special teams. I think that could be the case. I do think uh, Evans uh, could be a candidate to return to the practice squad, so we'll see what happens there. And then uh, Blassum Gain is, of course, your fullback. All right, wide receiver, uh, six guys making it here. Darnell Mooney, Byron Pringle, Bayless Jones Jr., Equinemia St. Brown. I think those four are pretty safe. Maybe there's a scenario where St. Brown gets cut, but I don't think it's super likely. Tajay Sharp, Dante Pettis, I have them being five and six over someone like David Moore than Daz Newsom as well. I've got Newsom, Moore, Finky getting cut. Uh, I do think that Newsom – uh, would return to the practice squad. Maybe Finky as well, a guy who uh, uh, performed pretty well during OTAs, but I think the depth chart would look like this. Top three, pretty clear, Mooney, Pringle, Bayless, Jones Jr., uh, St. Brown, wide receiver four, Tajay Sharp, Dante Pettis making it as depth guys with an opportunity to get some playing time as well. I do think when training camp gets here, this wide receiver competition will be fascinating because – Outside of Darnell Mooney, nothing's really a given. Now, I'd be shocked if, you know, someone like Byron Pringle got cut. cut. I think he's making enough money where that won't happen. But nothing's a given after Mooney. I do think Pringle and Bayless Jones are obviously safe. Jones is going to make this team. He's a third-round pick. Uh, Economy of St. Brown, he could get cut, though. That could be a surprise cut. Uh, you just never know. So I think wide receivers four through six, four through five, however many they decide to carry on the active roster, that is going to be something to watch during training camp. Will Daz Newsome make the Bears 53-man roster? I think that's a name to watch out for. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Now, by the way, when I label some cuts here, Chase Allen, the next one, I'm not labeling every player that gets cut, just some notable guys, some guys who, you know, stood out up maybe a little bit during camp or a name uh, that you guys might know. Like, I'm not, you know, showing the cuts for all 37 guys on the 90, man, that aren't going to make it. But at tight end, pretty simple. I think it's these three. Cole Komet, Ryan Griffin, James O'Shaughnessy. Maybe Chase Allen has a chance to make the 53. He's done some good things from what I've been told. But UDFA tight end, he's going to be on the outside looking in. I think Griffin and O'Shaughnessy are – Pretty safe overall, uh, and I think that's how the depth chart lays out. Komet, ready to take another step. Griffin O'Shaughnessy, a couple of quality vets that can come in and block, come in and catch uh, two tight end sets. If you want to do that, uh, I think you'd feel pretty good about that tight end room. Uh, Manscaped, uh, if you want to keep a tight end, uh, maybe you got some hair back there as well. 
uh, run on words, uh, trying to make this thing funny here for you guys. Uh, round of applause to me. Yay. No, in all seriousness, Manscaped, uh, Lawnmower 4.0, the best men's uh, grooming tool on the uh, planet. They use advanced skin care technology, adjustable blades on this thing as well. Uh, that way, you know, you can have a smooth shave downstairs. Go check out Manscaped. They have tons of other cool products as well. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. Shave that bush off so your package is looking better and bigger. Code Bears20, manscaped.com. That link is in the comments and in the description. All right, let's keep it moving here. We'll go to the offensive line here. I got nine guys making it overall. Teams usually carry anywhere from eight to ten. Braxton Jones, Larry Borum, Tevin Jenkins, uh, three surefire tackles to make the roster. Cody White here, obviously got to start at one of the at left guard. Lucas Patrick got to start at center. They're safe. I think for now, Sam Mustafer has to be considered safe because he's uh, your backup right guard could be your backup center, depending on how they feel about Doug Kramer, who I also have making it. Zach Thomas should make it. Uh, I also have Jatiri Carter making it as well. Dakota Dozier heads to IR. A couple of notable cuts. Uh, you know, a guy like Lachavius Simmons does not make it. Uh, but here you go. Here's the depth chart uh, on the offensive line. If these nine guys make it, uh, we'll see if Dozier uh, ends up getting uh, released on an injury settlement and wants to play elsewhere if he gets healthy. But for now, he's an IR stash. Uh, and we'll see what happens on that front. Uh, I think the offensive line, more than any other position group, could change during camp. You could add a player. Uh, guys could, are and probably will get shuffled around still. Uh, I don't think anything is set outside of center and left guard. I think Lucas Patrick's your starting center, and I think Cody White here is your starting left guard. I think Braxton Jones is the favorite at left tackle, but I don't think that's a given. I don't have a clue at right guard. I guess for now it's Mustafer, but I think there's a lot of movement still to come there. And then right tackle, I, I would give Borum the edge, but, you know, Tevin Jenkins probably isn't uh, done in that conversation either. So a lot of shuffling that could still take place between now and week one. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball now as we continue with our early 53-man roster projection. We're going 1-53 to here, offense to defense. So 24 offensive guys. Uh, we go to defense now. Robert Quinn, Travis Gibson, they're obviously safe. al Muhammad Muhammad safe as well. Dominic Robinson, the rookie edge rusher out of Miami of Ohio. And then I went a little heavier here. Charles Snowden, Carson Taylor, a couple of surprise guys. Snowden, the UDFA from last year. I think this 4-3 system should suit him better. And then Taylor as well, uh, undersized guy out of northern Arizona who is really impressed during the offseason program. Uh, OTAs, minicamp, uh, Adam Hogue, if you guys listen to Hogan Johns or the CHGO guys, they all do a great job. He's specifically mentioned Taylor on multiple occasions as a guy who has stood out to him. Now, we'll see when the pads go on, since he is a little undersized, how he performs. Uh, but I think he's a guy that has uh, jumped out so far, and I would guess Eberflus and Poles and the coaching staff have uh, caught wind of that and have taken notice. So, uh, I, you know, it's very possible one of Snowden or Taylor makes it, but I got both making it. I think it's possible uh, that they could go a little heavier at edge since they might be a little lighter at defensive tackle. Uh, subscribe now to Chicago Bears now. Free offseason videos every single day, all offseason and all year long. And before you know it, boom, it'll be training camp and uh, preseason week one will be here. It'll be here before we know it. YouTube.com slash Bears now. We will continue to keep you updated with the latest Chicago Bears news and rumors. All right, let's go from edge to defensive tackle. Um, five guys, you know, we'll see. Justin Jones, Kyrus Tongo, Eric Tonga, Angelo Blackson, uh, Mario Edwards, I think are all safe. Edwards I labeled as defensive line because he could play some edge for you as well. Uh, they signed Mike Pinnell recently, uh, who the last several years has been on an active roster. He's a pretty good run stopper, so I think he's probably safe. Maybe some, some insurance for a guy like Kyrus Tonga if he's not ready for a bigger role. Um, so we'll see. I got 11 defensive linemen. That's pretty heavy. I, one of the, I, I'm probably going to be wrong on one of these guys, but uh, I do think uh, Eberflus will value his front four. Uh, plus, uh, Robert Quinn, you know, still a bit of a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen there. All eyes are on him between now and training camp. Will we hear anything? Uh, could the Bears trade him? Uh, does he want out? Uh, will he show up at training camp? We shall see. Obviously, uh, if he's in the mix, he's going to make the team. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, I do think teams will be interested in his services. I think, you know, during this five-week gap uh, between minicamp and training camp, uh, Ryan Poles will certainly be willing to answer the call and see, uh, you know, if there are suitable trade offers for Robert Quinn. If he gets one he likes, hey, he could trade him. We'll have to wait and see. 
What will the Bears do with Robert Quinn? Take a guess for us. Type T for trade, type K for keep. You know, I think it's 50-50. I really do. I think it could go either way. Let me know what you guys think right now. All right, let's go to linebacker. Five more guys here. Roquan Smith, Nicholas Morrow, pretty obvious. Those are going to be your two primary backers. Uh, when you're sitting in nickel, those will be the two guys out there most of the time. Matthew Adams, I think he's more of a fourth backer. For now, he's probably your number three. He's a good special teams player. Uh, but uh, for now, he's probably your Sam linebacker. Caleb Johnson, Jack Sanborn, Sanborn, another UDFA out of Wisconsin, which I think could make this team. Could certainly see the Bears adding another linebacker, Anthony Barr, Anthony Hitchens, Joe Schobert, uh, some guys that are still out there. Uh, so don't be surprised uh, if something like that were to happen. But for now, uh, I think this is uh, kind of what you're looking at. Uh, Roquan, Morrow, Adams, your three primary guys. I think you'll be a nickel a lot, so it'll be Nick Morrow and Roquan Smith. And then I think Caleb Johnson makes his team, as does Jack Sanborn. Let's go to the cornerback position. Five guys make it. Notable cut is Duke Shelley. We'll get to him in a minute. But Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, your two starting outside corners. Uh, Tavon Young, Thomas Graham Jr., I think they'll compete at nickel. And then I think Kendall Vildor will make this team. Uh, he's got a decent amount of starting experience. He still has a couple of years left on his rookie contract. Uh, I just think I would rather go with him, a younger player, than a guy like Duke Shelley, who's he's had time and he just hasn't really – taking that next step. I think Duke Shelley's time is up. Now, it could come down to Kendall Wilder, Duke Shelley, who's a better special teams player, and you could argue Shelley has been in, in his career, but I just wonder if this Bears regime looks at Wilder and is like, man, you know, he's played a lot the last couple of years. Sure, he's gone through his ups and downs, mostly downs, but maybe there's still a little potential there, whereas with Duke Shelley, we kind of know what he is, right? He's a low-end nickelback, decent special teams guy. Uh, I would probably opt to keep a guy like Builder over Shelley, uh, but it could go either way. So this is the projected CB room. Uh, Kyler Gordon, Jalen Johnson, Tavon Young. Uh, Graham would be uh, competing at nickel, obviously, and then Kendall Builder, a backup cornerback as well. All right, we'll get to safety, and then we'll wrap it up with the specialists. Uh, Eddie Jackson, free safety. Jaquan Brisker, strong safety. I think that's pretty clear uh, who your starting safeties are. DeAndre Houston Carson, your third safety. You can play free and strong, uh, but label him as free because Crookshank is kind of a strong. Uh, I think he makes it. And then Elijah Hicks, uh, seventh-round pick out of Cal, who's missed a lot of the offseason stuff. He was nursing an injury uh, coming into this offseason. Uh, but hopefully he's ready to go by training camp. Five safeties. You could go four. We'll see. But since I only went five corners, I went ten, nick uh, ten defensive backs in total. Five corners, five safeties. Houston Carson can play some nickel for you as well if you really need him to. So uh, there you have it. That's the depth chart on that front. Name a surprise player that will make the roster. Uh, you know, Jack Sanborn, Carson Taylor. Those could be a couple. Charles Snowden. Uh, some UDFA guys or some late-round picks. Daz Newsom would be a surprise at this point, I think. Let me know who a surprise player that you think is out there on this 90-man that could make the 53. No surprises here. Uh, Cairo Santos will be the kicker. Trenton Gill will be the punter. Uh, Antonio Ortiz is also on the roster as a long snapper, but I assume they'll go with the vet, Patrick Scales, because – it's not a huge monetary difference. Probably go with someone they trust. But who knows? Maybe they'll go Ortiz. We'll have to wait and see. But pretty standard here uh, for the specialists. Uh, I don't think uh, this would surprise anybody. Gill, obviously a rookie out of NC State. That'll be a bit of an adjustment moving on from Patrick uh, Pat O'Donnell excuse me, to Trenton Gill. There you go. 53-man roster projection. Let me know what your – thoughts are on my 53 guys that make it down in the comments if you have any bigger disagreements you can of course let me know uh that's why uh we have fun here because we agree we disagree uh we go back and forth youtube.com slash bears now we continue to bring you the latest bears news and rumors that's why you should subscribe today